Hi, I'm David Wong. I'm a master's student in cryptography at the University of Bordeaux. Uh, this video is going to be an explanation of the original paper, the first paper on differential power analysis, which is an attack on smart cards. Uh, the original paper was published in 1998 uh, by Paul Kosher et al. And as a student a few months ago, I had a I was trying to find a good video to explain what was DPA on YouTube, but I couldn't find anything. So I thought that would be a good idea to give you an explanation of what I understood, and maybe that will help a future student that will be in my position, or maybe someone interested in the subject. So the paper is here, and uh, it's easily you can easily find it on cryptography.com. If it's not there, I'm sure you can find it somewhere on the internet. So DPA is a side channel attack on smart cards. What we'll do is that we'll analyze and observe all the information being leaked by the smart card in the encryption. That information will be leaked as power consumed during the encryption. And to do that, we need to modify the card. So this is pretty intrusive for the card. The, the paper talks about DES because back then it was the most used cipher. So if you're not familiar with DES, I advise you to stop that video right now and to check the cryptographic course of Dan Bonny that is available on Coursera. And there, there is a very great video explaining DES in details and I think you can find it on YouTube. Okay, I will take you through the steps of a DP attack from a higher level so you don't get lost into the details when we dig deeper. So the first thing we do is a SPA, Simple Power Analysis. We try to guess what cipher is being used during the encryption. And this is very important because if a cipher is used and we don't know what cipher is being used, then we cannot perform the attack. In the paper, we'll focus on this. So once we know what cipher is being used, we record a bunch of encryptions with the card we record the traces and the ciphertext that are being encrypted. The traces are basically graphs of the power consumption in time. So we have a bunch of traces and we want to align them so we can do computations on them. So this is not an interesting part. And what we want to do with all those traces and their ciphertext is we want to sort them into two different sets. We want to sort them according to one or according to one bit of their internal state during the last round. And according to if that bit is one, you'll put them in one set. If that bit is zero, you'll put them in another set. To compute that one bit, we'll use a function that is called a selection function. And that selection function will use the ciphertext that we have and the key, especially six bits of the key. So we'll call that a block of the key. Not any key, the last round subkey. So that will allow us to make assumptions on the keys to use that function. So after on we'll have two sets filled with traces that we have sorted according to that one bit. And when we have those two sets, we want to compute the differential trace, which is the difference of those two sets. And this will help us get the key, because if we made a correct assumption on the key, we'll have something, and if we didn't make the correct assumption on the key, we'll have something else, and you'll see what. And when we get, once we get the confirmation that our guess on the key was correct, that is six bits of the last round subkey, we have a block of subkey. And we can repeat that with different bits and with different guesses of different block of subkeys until we get the entire subkey of the last round of tests, and then we can calculate the key, the master key of tests, and you'll see how. So let me go back to the simple power analysis part. So when we have a trace of an encryption, it looks like this. So this is a basic trace of an encryption, and you can see the power being consumed by the smart card during one encryption. And you can see a pattern that is repeating 16 times, like the 16 rounds of DES. And this is how we can guess that DES is being used in that smart card. Uh, so simple power analysis is just analyzing very simply 
uh, without difficult computations what information are leaking in the power consumption of the card. So here we guess it was this, and if you zoom in that trace, which is not possible because here it's a drawing, but if you have a real trace and you zoom in on one, one of the round, you'll be able also to distinguish every operation. So for example, you might be able to see a pattern repeating itself eight times. That might be a reference to the eight S-boxes of the round function of this. So when we have that, we want to focus on the last round, right? So the last peak. So we're going to create a selection function that will compute one specific bit of the internal state right before the last round of this, uh, which is this bit, the first bit of the left side. Uh, this bit will help us to sort the recorded encryptions into two sets. Why do we want to separate them into two sets? You ask because because the bit value of the data is correlated with the power consumption. That means that, for example, this XOR operation will use more power if the bit is 1 and less power if the bit is 0. And this will appear on the traces. That's why we want to separate them into two different sets. Okay, so let's see how this selection function works before we see what we do with the, with the sorted encryptions. And I apologize in advance for the crappy drawings and the crappy animations, but that's all I have. So we want to compute that first bit on the left side, right? That's the last run of, of this. And to compute that first bit here, we need the first bit of the right side of the ciphertext that we have, right? But we cannot compute that bit without one other bit because there is a XOR in the middle. So that other bit is the value of the s-box, the first s-box of the run function after after being fed a 6-bit input. So that's why we'll need to know what are those 6 bits that we fed the s-box with. And those 6 bits are the XOR of the first 6 bits of the subkey, the last round subkey, and the 6 bits, the first 6 bits of this block that comes out of the right side of the internal state right before the expansion. That can comes from five bits or six bits depending on where we where we want those bits to come. So that right side of the internal state is actually the left side of the ciphertext that we have also. So to, comp to compute that first bit on the left side we just need a few bits from the ciphertext that we have and 6 bits from the subkey. And this is how we make assumptions on the subkey. If we, if we make the good assumption on the subkey, then the bits that we compute thanks to the selection function will be correct all the time. But if we do not feed the selection function a correct subkey, then it will be correct half the time. Okay, remember that we recorded a bunch of traces along with their ciphertext. So now we want to sort them into two sets. We want to sort them in one set where their bit is supposed to be 1, and we want to sort them into another set where their bit is supposed to be 0. For that, we use the selection function on the ciphertext. We take, for example, the first trace and the selection function on its first ciphertext, and if it yields 1, we put the trace in the first set. And we do the same with the second, the second trace, and the third trace, and the fourth trace and we then get two sets filled with different traces. We then calculate the average trace, which is just the average of all the traces. And we then calculate the difference of those two average traces, that is the differential trace. So, remember, I said that if we, get, if we made a wrong assumption on the key, then the selection function will be wrong half the time. That means that if we made the wrong assumption on the key, we kind of randomly sorted those traces, and we have then two sets that kind of look similar. And the average of those two sets will, the two average traces of those two sets will kind of look the same. So when we do the di differential trace, when we do the difference between those two sets, they will just cancel out and we'll have a flat line. 
so this will tell us that we made the wrong assumption on the key. What is interesting is when we make the right assumption on the key. So if we fit the right key to the selection function, we then correctly sorted all the traces into two different sets. The set where their one bit is equal to one and the set where their one bit is equal to zero. And when we look at the traces, let's look at the average trace of the first set, we can see sort of a peak, sort of a bump, where the one, uh, there is a one, the XOR operation. And there is that much power being consumed by the card for that XOR. And when we look at the second set, average trace, then we see that the XOR operation used less power. So the two average traces kind of look similar, except at certain points where there is a correlation, when there is effectively more or less power being consumed and the magic happens when we do the differential trace and then we can see that it effectively cancels out everything apart where the, there was this difference in the average traces and this is this is a peak a positive peak and it's not that big of a peak it looks big because the curve is flattened but it's not that big compared to the original traces and this shows us that we made the right assumption on the key. That we made the right assumption on the six bits of the sub key, of the last round sub key. Once we have correctly guessed the six bits of the last round sub key, we can then repeat all of that process with a different bit in the selection function. We then fit it a new block of the last round sub key to try to guess it. And we do that on and on until we obtain all the different block of the last round subkey and we can have the last round subkey entirely. Now, how do we get the key? How do we get the master key out of that last round subkey? Well, it's easy. In DES, the key schedule that creates all the 16 rounds keys is linear. That means that out of only one round subkey, we can just do some linear algebra and we can compute the first master key. And this is how my explanation of DPA ends. I hope you understood it as well as I understood it. If you have any questions, if you didn't understand something, or if you want to know more about something, or if you want to tell me how wrong I was, or worse, you want to tell me how my animations and drawing sucked, well, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section. Uh, special thanks to Alberto Battisteo for his course on smart cards at the University of Bordeaux and for answering some of my questions about DPA. And I will leave you on that. And I hope you will succeed in anything you're doing right now. Cheers!